2010. The DSH agreement, as we know it, has to be renegotiated. We need to sit at the table and to discuss the provisions because there are provisions that we had a difficulty with. DSH's position then was that the, the why they had not been able to implement the agreement because the last government, led by the leader of the opposition, had not stuck to their um, their commitments and did not, in a rightful manner, um, implemented what was agreed, and their manner of conducting business was questionable. In a sense, that is what the, the message we got. Then they indicated to us, look, um, St. Lucia has not delivered, especially under the last government, and therefore they would they are minded to go to arbitration. Our team is ready any day we have to go to arbitration to defend the interests of solution. So, so there is no question about our commitment, our dedication to defend and fight for the best interests of solution. Nine. It is worth admiring and pointing out that Honorable Prime Minister Fidi JPA and his administration have consistently explored the feasible ways to address the public security issue. Prime Minister PN has secured special operational equipment and more than $400,000 from the Republic of China on Taiwan to equip the Forensic Services Unit with cutting-edge firearms examinations and analysis capabilities. It is very vital at this time. Very often criminals think that they can commit crime with impunity and escape with this. But today, we are letting you know that we are determined to put whatever we are going to receive today into use. Eight. I am delighted to inform you that the Prime Minister, Honorable Philip J. Pierre, will lead a delegation representing our nation at the upcoming Canada CARICOM summit. We've seen the devastating effects of floods, of drought, of floods, of earthquakes, etc. Canada is committed to assist us in this regard. So what you hope to get from this, this summit is saying to, to the world, through Canada, that listen to me, we have to do something, we have to meet our commitments, we have to help these islands in, in the adaptation and their mitigation. Seven. Young persons from the Castries Southeast community got a vital avenue to tap into career opportunities. During a job fair recently, at the CPJ car park in Cul-de-Sac. We at the National Skills Development Center, we're always excited to participate in any event or activity that actually um, allows our youth to go forward and allows them to uh, make progress in life. I really hope that um, going forward that anyone, the young persons, when those opportunities come up, that they understand that this would add such value to their offering as an employee, as someone who's applying for a job. Six. Uh, you really match our uh, culture in the family. It's uh, nice to do just welcoming us here. It's nice to you prepare this uh, stage here. These uh, people came here. The refreshment they make here. This, uh, the dancer that you made. This very big effort you made for us. And thank you from bottom of my heart what you are doing today. We're really delighted to have you. Today is the start of the cruise season for us. You're the very first ship. So it says that you're special. Five. Significant strides have been made by technocrats attached to the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice and Empowerment towards the design, development and implementation of a social information system SIS that would guide decision making as it relates to allocating resources towards vulnerable and poor populations. So the IT component of the Human Capital Resilience Project is a major component in modernizing and strengthening the social protection system for St. Lucia. Four. The multi-dimensional approach was being promoted to ensure all key partners play a role in the development of health and climate policies. We recognize that health has not been prominently featured in the NDCs. It is often implicitly captured under the broader targets for adaptation with limited clearly stated targets within the larger climate policy framework. HNAP development is therefore the first key step in its integration into the climate policy architecture. Three. The Ministry of Tourism held a soft opening for the new vendors lay by at Mon Fortune. The heroes of, the, of, of this facility are going to be the vendors. You are not only small business operators, 
but you are also ambassadors for the destination. I want to say to the vendors that this is not a permanent holding area for you. By next cruise season, early October next year, we should be moving into the new structure. Two. The Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security and Rural Development, in collaboration with the Food and Agriculture Organization, has turned its attention towards the ginger subsector. There is very high demand for local ginger with the potential for import substitution with an increased production base and volume. One. The Ministry of Commerce and the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards joined the international community to mark the observance of World Standards Day on October 14th. World Standards Day is being observed under the theme Shared Vision for a Better World. On behalf of the Government of St. Lucia, I would like to thank the members of the Standards Council, the management and volunteers on our technical committees, the staff of the Bureau, for their service and commitment in developing and working towards the goal of securing our national quality infrastructure.